Hi, and welcome to my introduction to calligraphy, to copper plate calligraphy part number four. In this short video, I'm going to be writing a few words um, using the letters that we have visited on part one, two, and three. Okay, so I'll start slowly as always. And um, again, I'm using a guideline that is landscape. But if you go to my Instagram account and follow the link on my bio, you're gonna find a folder called calligraphy guide sheets and you can download the zip folder which contains different calligraphy styles, um, different empty guidelines for different calligraphy styles. And the one for copper plate, I believe is like a portrait version of, of this one, but it's based on the same ratio. Um, okay, so if you haven't watched the other parts, maybe you want to go first and visit part one, two, and three, because the letters that I'm going to be writing today are. Uh, have been explained before. And so now what I'm going to do is put these letters in words, which is what calligraphy at the end of the day is, is about. I'm gonna talk about the relationship between uh, the letters, the spacing and how we connect them. Um, okay, uh, let's start slowly like always. I'm going to be using a ballpoint pen as well as the pointed nib, because I believe that is very important that we understand the shapes. And this is something that we can do with a ballpoint pen. And then we have to master the tool. So there is two uh, important things in here. So one is memorizing the shapes, understanding the shapes and understanding the ratio and the scale. And the other uh, task is actually mastering this pen, which it takes a while. For me, it took me many years. and slowly uh, I have been improving and showing progress and keeping all my uh, exercises always with me um, because I treat my progress as my inspiration to keep going. So in this case in here, I'm just using a regular uniball uh, pen, fine. And then in here, this is my hand 101, but if you're a beginner, you probably want to be using an eco G or a zebra G because it's a slightly easier than controlling this name. Okay. So the first word that I'm going to write today, it's minimum, which is a really long uh, word, but it's a very good example of rhythm and contrast for this alphabet. I'm going to go slightly closer now, just to make sure that I'm in the right position. Okay, so as always, I'm going to be indicating where am I sitting on this guideline. So we have in here the X height, which for the moment is what we are going to use because minimum doesn't have any ascenders or descenders. And I have the short ascender line, the long ascender line, and the same short descender and long descender. Okay, so uh, for the first uh, word, I, on, I am only going to be using the X height. So I'm going to start with the uh, fine liner. All right, so um, the ratio of these letters, the width will depend on your own style. And I explained that on part two. Uh, and you can go and revisit the video. So I'm going to start with letter M. So I'm starting at the base of the X height and I'm going up and creating the first starch. And then I'm going up again and creating the second arch. And then I'm going up again and creating the third arch. And then I have a double turn movement and I'm going all the way up because I'm going to write letter I. Now I'm going down for letter I and I'll have another double turn for letter N. And I need to make sure that all these letters are following the 55 degree angle. Okay, so I have the second I going down, turn, another turn, beginning of my M, second arch of the M, third arch of the M, going up, letter U, 
up again. And now I have another double turn to create the third M. Second arch, third arch, exit. And then tittle or dot for the eye on the same angle. So what are the things that I'm looking in here at the moment? Um, I'm gonna go a little bit closer again. All right, so what I'm looking is at the spaces inside the letter forms and at the spaces in between the letter forms. So that is my, the arches of my first M and I'm looking at something very consistent across the other letter forms. So that the inside and the, uh, the inside between the letters are very, very similar because I'm creating an alphabet design where every letter is connected to each other. All right. So I call this the DNA of the alphabet. Because this is a very big family of 26 members and every member is independent to each other, but every member carries the same DNA. So they are individuals, but they carry the same characteristics throughout. So I want to see this DNA in all the uh, members of the family. Now, I also want to see that the space inside informs the space in between. And so that all these areas are similar to each other. In this case, when we have an I and an N, because there is a stroke that is dividing the space, it's always gonna be a slightly bigger than the other spaces because I have a black line dividing this space. So it's darkening the area, it's making it smaller. So it's gonna be a slightly bigger than this area inside, but it's slightly, not like very, very big. So we have the same example in here from the I holding hands and going to the M, this area, it's going to be bigger than if we compare this area in here. So it is pretty clear that this one, these areas are the only ones that are not gonna be as similar as the other ones, okay? So in this case, we have three. And you see with the bar in here, it's obviously telling you that it's not the same. So it's a slightly bigger, but every other area is going to be really similar from what happens inside to what happens in between. Okay, so we have these, yeah. Okay, so I want to look at this pattern and I want to understand that this is what I want to create for every other combination of letter forms, no matter if it's this one, like only um, letters inside the X height or letters that are ascenders and descenders or oval shapes. I always want to keep this relationship. Now let's do the same, but with the thin and thick. So let's move a little bit the paper and then let's repeat the same with the nib. Now I mentioned in other videos that if I am writing, if, if this is cursive handwriting, the, um, the goal, let me go back. The goal of joining every letter to each other is that we can acquire a speed so we can go a lot faster. But for copper plate, the targeting here is not a speed, is precision, is elegance. So we are going to get rid of the speed to emphasize fanciness and elegance and delicacy. So I'm going to repeat this movement, but I'm going to be stopping in many areas now. When it's finished, the word looks connected and can look like if it was a continuous writing, but I am definitely going to stop. So it's not um, a continuous movement where I'm not lifting the pen from the paper at all. Like it's really different. This is now, uh, calligraphy and not handwriting. So I am actually going to make sure that everything looks really balanced. Now, first movement. So I'm starting on the baseline and I'm going up 
very thin and the first starch around and apply pressure. Now, reference point, I mentioned this on the first uh, part of these videos on part one. Reference point, which is roughly the center of the X height, the thin goes away from the thick, second arch and down. And now I repeat the same again, more or less center of the X height, up and down. I'm going up again for letter I, and I'm going slightly to the right to make sure the top of my eye is flat and double turn down, okay? I already see problems, but I'm going to keep going and then I'll mention everything at the end. Now, again, reference point, again, center of the X height, the thin goes away from the thick, curvy, down, up, holding hands to letter I, and I need more ink. So obviously I'm gonna stop. And then going to the right, flat top and down. Double turn, letter M. Second arch, third arch and double turn going up to letter U. And again, double turn. And the third arch and the third M and exit following the 55 degree angle. And I go back and put the dot in here. Okay, so notes on this exercise and things that I do. So if you notice, I stop quite a lot. Um, I'm going to place numbers in here pointing out the areas that I stopped in this, um, writing this word. So with my first arch, I stopped. With my second arch, I stopped. Then I went along the third one and go up to the top of the eye and I stop in here. I make a flat top with the eye and then double turn to create the first N. So that's my next stop. Um, Arch, double turn, holding hands to letter I, number five. Then going down, double turn, and holding hands to the first part of my second M, six. Arch, seven. Arch, holding hands to the top of my letter U, second part of the U. And in here, if I want, I can stop as well. And then in here, double turn and the first part of my M, the second part and the end. All right, that, this is a lot of stops and you probably don't need to do them or you don't want to do them. Like it's possible and easy to go down with the M and then keep going and keep going. Um, it's not that you have to stop, but I want to point out very clear that if you want precision and if you want everything to look really uniform, you might need to slow down the movement a lot. And this is very much detached from cursive handwriting because yes, when it's finished, uh, it might look like it could be cursive, but the way how we have created this uh, word is very different because we are paying attention to many things. It's not like flowy and carefree. It's not expressive, it's a, but it can be expressive later on, but it is very intentional at the beginning and the beginning can be years. Now, things that I don't like about this exercise is that I see that sometimes the arches are not as similar as I would like to. Sometimes some parts of the letter are not following the slant. So sometimes I press more and sometimes I press a lot less in here. Okay. So I'm pointing out things that I use them for self-evaluation. And it's not about telling myself that 
this is rubbish, is telling myself that there is room for improvement and that I need to enjoy the process because the process might take many, many months, many, many years for some of us. So it's just paying attention because by understanding why it looks odd or why it doesn't work, I can improve. And so all of these things uh, are what, what I'm doing every time I'm writing and I'm, and I'm considering what is going on in here and what did I do? Now, next one. So the next word, which is a lot easier because it's a lot shorter, is joy. Okay, so I'm going back up. And now I'm doing the same with my ballpoint pen. Okay, so letter J. Um, letter J starts like letter I. Top. I'm going down. I'm creating a loop. I'm crossing the loop on the descenders. And I stop. Why do I stop in there in the middle of the X height? Because I have an oval or ellipse shape coming up and I want to make sure that I allocate the space on my O to then visually when I do it, it won't be visible, but I'm going to stop in the middle of the X height, allocate the space. I start at two o'clock and I go up and down holding hands, close the loop of the O and from here, I'm going up, curvy, down, up, going down again, and creating the second loop for this word. Exit. OK, things that I'm studying in here. So these areas are the loops. And because I mentioned that we are designing an alphabet, means that every loop is related to each other. So what we are intending to create in here are loops that are as similar as possible. Now, second thing, how do I know how big is going to be my O? Well, once I have the first loop of this letter form, this already is telling me how big is my O, because the dimensions of the loops should be related to the dimension of the oval. And this is by the books, but then, of course, you can change it and break it. But if we start from the foundation, which is what we are doing in here, is that uh, the width inside the O will relate to the width inside the Y and will relate to the width inside my loops because everything is connected again across the same DNA. Later on, yes, we can do a lot of personal um, and expressive um, calligraphy where we really take things outside of these conditions. But I believe that if we don't learn the conditions first, it's really hard then to know where we are sitting. Okay, so the O fits inside my loop. The Y fits inside my loop. Of course, now I mentioned that in uh, the other videos, I think in the last part number three, that my Y it's going to tell me the exact shape that I am going to have when I do letter H, all right? So this is what we have in here. And now let's do it with the pointed pen. So I'm gonna repeat the same, now adding thin and fix. All right, so I'm starting at the base of the X height and going up really thin. I go one millimeter to the right to ensure the top of my J is flat and then down. Release, thin around the corner, loop, cross the baseline and go to the center of the X height and stop. When I cross the baseline and I'm starting to go towards the right hand side, I need to pay attention to the spacing because what I'm creating is also a pattern between the spaces and the letter forms. So whatever is happening in here, I want it to happen in bet between the letter forms in a very similar way. Now I allocate the space for my O. I start at two o'clock and I'm going up, rounding down, thin and loop inside my O. So the contour of my O is clean. And from here, which is again roughly in the center of the X height, 
this arm opens up and holds hands to the next letter form. Push up, flat top again, and going down, and the loop. And you see in here, I run out of ink, which is something that will happen a million times before and after this. Okay, so I try to fill in the railway that I just created. I never do that. Like, I don't retouch my work normally in this way, but I just don't want to go back at the moment. So I just retouched it. All right. So this is uh, what I did. Now, what did I stop? As I mentioned in here, I stopped in here before the oval shape, number one. Then I created the oval. I did all this movement all together. So double turn for the Y. I stopped in here, number two, and then loop and exit, all right? Um, in this case, there is only two stops. So if you compare to minimum, of course, there is a big difference. So it's good to analyze everything and look at the letter forms and always look, uh, write in words because when writing words is when we are going to have to answer many problems and, and that's how we can improve. Now, the next word I'm going to do is vino, which in Spanish means wine. So again, ballpoint pen. I'm starting on the baseline and I'm going up. So first arch, going down, double turn and going up. And from here, loop, okay? So from here, I'm going up to open up and I'm going down. And again, another double turn. And from here, arch for the end, down, stop in the middle of the X height, two o'clock, going up, holding hands, going down, loop inside the O and exit. And I go back and add the dot of or title of letter I. Okay, so the same. I'm trying to, as you see, create all these four uh, words that are related to each other as well. So that the O relates to the O from joy, that the N relates to the uh, shape of the Y and that the V is also the same shape as the Y. I can see in here, my V is slightly wider than my letter Y. So I just need to be paying attention in here, okay? Um, we don't have ascenders and descenders in this case, so just inside the X height. Now let's go with the nip and the thin and fix. All right, so starting from the baseline and I'm going up, thin, around, push, release. Now from inside the letter form, I'm going to create this teardrop so that the outskirts are very clean. And then outside and up and flat top and then double turn for my N, arch of the N going up, stopping in the center because I have an oval shape. So every time I have an oval shape, I stop in the center and then I allocate the space for the O, down, and finish. All right, and then the title O dot of. Now it's areas that I stopped doing this word. So I did the V, I created the teardrop and very, very slow to know, to avoid dragging ink, I went back up and flat top. So I'm going to say it's easy to stop at the top of letter I for sure. Now double turn and bottom of the N, number two, arch of the N and half of the X height, number three. And then from here up and closing and finishing the letter form. These are areas that you can stop. Some of them will be 100% sure because uh, when we have an oval shape, the pen is lifted completely and go to the other side. 
these ones are optional depending on of the flow of your writing. Now, things that I want to pay attention because sometimes they don't follow the um, slant of 55 degrees. Uh, this one is fine. This one is not fine. So I have to pay attention in there, okay? So that the letter form follows the same slant all the time. Um, next letter is letter, uh, next word, sorry, is, is uh, zinc. Uh, maybe I can fit it in here. Okay. So I'm going back to the ballpoint pen and doing that first and understanding what's going on in here. So I'm starting on the base of the X height and I'm going up, first arch, inverted oval. Now I'm going to have a tiny loop on the baseline and then I'm going to open up again and creating the loop. I'm going out and holding hands with my letter I. Double turn. And stop in the center of the X height. Two o'clock, up, down, Exit. All right, things that I want to look at. If I move the paper, maybe I can fit everything. Okay. Again, I want to look at this loop and see that these are similar as the other ones that I did for Joy. I want to look at the N again and see that it's similar to this N. I want to see this C that is actually a letter O but open. And the movement in here also is containing an, a letter O, so that everything follows the same uh, widths. All right. Now, let's go back. Let's go down in here and go with the pointed pen. So I'm going up, very thin, and around. Push, release, and tiny loop in the center, push again and release again, and the loop of the Z to Z. And now, looking at the spacing as much as the shape of the letter form. I'm gonna, as you see, oh, one second, because there is some ink on the tip of my pen. Uh, as you're seeing here, um, I'm trying to keep the loops the same as the other letter forms. Um, flat top and then letter I. And letter N. Stop in the center of the X height, two o'clock, up and down, exit. All right, uh, things that uh, you can review the shape of letter Z or Z in the uh, video part number two. So you can go there and see I explain this shape. Now, I stopped in here. So places that I'm stopping are at the top of the letter I. I did the entire letter and then at the bottom of the N. And then in the center uh, of the X height to allocate the space for the letter um, C and the exit. All right. So that's possible possible places where you can stop. Uh, okay, one more. Let's do the word point. So all right. I'm going to use one of the pieces that we did, I think, in the first session. So I'm going up from the baseline, just halfway up between the top of the X height and the short ascender line. And then I'm going down only till the short descender line. I'm going again with a N shape, arch, down, up, stop. I allocate the space for my O, two o'clock, down, up, close the oval, open my arm to hold hands with letter I. 
down, double turn for letter N, and all the way up to the short ascender line for letter T, exit, dot, and if I want, elongated um, crossbar. Again, things that I want to look at in here, the same as before. The uh, letter forms are really similar to each other in terms of width. The slant is as constant as possible to 55 degrees. And the spacing is very similar to the space inside the letter forms. So let's do this again with the ballpoint pen. So I'm starting really thin and going up. And then going to the right and down. Now from the baseline, I'm going up, curvy, down, and up again, thin, stop. Curvy at the top and letter O holding hands again. Inside the O, my loop. And from here, I open my arm and a ligature to letter I, flat top and down. Double turn for my letter N. And from here, second arch of the N and all the way up to letter T, flat top. Exit. Uh, if I want to have a, a straight crossbar, just like that. Uh, places where I stopped, uh, in here is the first place I stopped. And then I do the end shape and I stop in there to create my oval. Then the top of the eye is possible to stop. Double turn to the bottom of the end. Um, and then arch top of the T, easy to stop in there as well if you need to, to readjust and then down and exit. Op options for all of this. Um, yeah, okay, I hope this is helpful. Let me know if this um, session was helpful in terms of creating words. And if it is, I'll create a second um, part of this short video, uh, writing more words and talking about the relationships between them. Uh, as always, thank you so much. And, and yeah, just leave me a comment uh, if that was helpful. Let's go back outside. And that's the summary of today. <laughs>